Very good afternoon. We're going to take you uh, straight to the capital of Taiwan now, uh, Taipei, where the results of the presidential and parliamentary elections are uh, imminently known. Helen Ann Smith, our correspondent, is there. What can you tell us, Helen Ann? <laughs> Uh, well, I can tell you it is just four hours since the polls closed here in Taiwan, and it seems that we have a winner. You might be able to see on the screen behind me that man in the white coat. His name is Ho Yoi. He is the opposition KMT candidate, and he is conceding defeat uh, as we speak in this Taiwanese election. And it means uh, that the winner, as has been expected, is a man called Lai ching -tze. Lai ching -tze is the current uh, vice president of Taiwan. He represents the DPP party here. It's the ruling party. It's been in power for the last eight years. Uh, and it is the party, crucially here in Taiwan, that takes the hardest line against China. Uh, Lai ching a popular figure, uh, he has really based his entire campaign around this very clear message uh, that this vote, as he says, has been a choice between democracy uh, and autocracy, making that hard line against China uh, a very, very central part of his campaign. And it has clearly resonated with voters uh, here. It will be very, very shortly that we will see him up on this podium. This is exactly where we expect him to make his victory uh, declaration, uh, and we will hopefully have a, a chance to ask questions of him uh, about that victory. Remember, here in Taiwan, it is a, a flourishing democracy, a big, uh, powerful economy. They run their own uh, military and so on and so forth, but it is not officially an independent uh, country because its big, powerful neighbor, China, it feels it has a stake in what happens here. It sees this province, uh, this island, as a breakaway province, uh, and it makes consistent uh, threats uh, towards this island. This, China's actually worth saying has been a little quiet uh, this week, perhaps uh, interpreted as a uh, kind of attempt not to accidentally push voters into the hands of the DPP, because uh, it is this result, uh, a DPP, a Lai ching -se victory, that will be considered the most provoking outcome uh, to China. But look, outside this tent, there is a victory party underway uh, with uh, people of Taipei, uh, and people uh, are elated. We've been in and out of this tent checking in with people, and people are excited, they are motivated, and again, so many of them telling us uh, that it was that cross-strait relations issue uh, that really, really motivated them. And uh, we heard warnings from Chinese authorities uh, towards the t Taiwanese electorate about voting again for the DPP, Helen Ann. Um, if this is the result, as it very much looks to be um, behind you there, w what will be the reaction from, from the Chinese government? Look, that remains to be seen, but I, I think it's pretty certain there will be some form of response. As I said, China has actually been relatively quiet this week. Uh, you know, it, over the last sort of weeks, months, years, there's been lots of military threats made towards this island. We see Chinese warplanes uh, flying towards here almost on a daily basis, but actually not that many this week. And although um, a, f a few months ago a, a certain Chinese official characterized this vote as a choice between war and peace, uh, really sort of relatively threatening there. But we haven't actually heard any of that sort of stuff this week. Again, the Chinese, I think, opting on quite intentionally to keep quite quiet this week so as not to push voters into the hands of the DPP. Last time in the election in 2020, it was very much seen that um, the DPP won a landslide victory, partly because the Chinese had been pretty threatening in the week running up to the election. So perhaps that was an intentional tactic. What comes next? It's really, really unclear. Uh, you know, both before and after elections in the past, sometimes Taiwan has, uh, China has shot missiles towards this island. I think it's relatively likely we will see warplanes flying towards this island in the coming days. Uh, perhaps some strong statements from Beijing. Uh, it's just really unclear at the moment. But I think it's unlikely uh, China would let this pass without some form of response. The other interesting dynamic, Helen Ann, will of course be the result of the parliamentary election. The DPP of course just had a tiny majority, didn't they? And we could see a president with a minority government. 
Yeah, that's entirely true. Uh, the DPP really uh, only about six, seven seats uh, kind of majority in the last parliament. And that, according to people we've spoken to here, while they were really pretty confident coming in today about the presidential vote, uh, they did say that that parliamentary vote will be much, much closer. And of course, that will make um, Leichinger's life difficult if he doesn't win that majority in the parliament. Um, as we see in so many countries around the world, things like passing legislation and whatnot will be difficult. And that will be important, particularly on issues uh, such as uh, spending on defence, for instance, which is an absolutely critical issue here in Taiwan, given uh, the threats they face uh, from across the strait. So uh, it will be a little longer until we hear uh, that result. But as you say, yes, that vote running much, much closer, which I think is uh, likely uh, to mean that it will be declared much, much later. But worth saying, we don't have all the official numbers yet in this election. But what we do know, uh, Taiwan basically releases their results based on polling stations. So no, over 90% of polling stations have declared uh, their presidential uh, results so far. And, and in that, uh, Lai ching is, is ahead at nearly 40% of the vote. Uh, this was a three-way race, actually, this time in Taiwan. Really the first time uh, in the history of democracy here in Taiwan that there's been this properly three-horse race. And it's interpreted in many ways that part of Lai's victory might be in part due to the fact that this third insurgent party known as the TPP that focused uh, primarily on domestic issues uh, has really stolen a lot of votes uh, at the expense of the opposition KMT and, and previously it's been a sort of two-horse race. Uh, so look, a fascinating dynamic playing out. That three-horse race dynamic will also be very, very interesting when it comes to the uh, parliamentary result as well. Clearly very lively behind you, so kudos to you, Helen Ann, for um, keeping, keeping your live going with, without tripping up um, over that background noise. Um, the previous, the outgoing president, uh, she marked her administration, didn't she, very much by sort of building the profile of Taiwan internationally and strengthening links, particularly with Western countries like the United States. Can we expect more of the same from her, uh, what, what, who was her vice president? Yes, we absolutely can, in short, and, and that is the key reason why China sees him as so provocative. Um, uh, Tsai Ing-wen, the outgoing president, she served two terms. She's stepping down uh, because of the term limits uh, here in Taiwan. Uh, but she really uh, garnered a reputation for being a very solid pair of hands, but quietly, consistently uh, building up those relationships with, crucially, uh, the United States of America, much to China's distaste. Um, and remember, you know, she, she was seen as a, a sort of a, a relatively stable figure, often went out of her way not to provoke China. You know, but nonetheless, she again stood on this platform of taking a relatively hard line against China. Um, you know, the DPP would never describe itself as pro-independence. It, you know, any party that publicly said that here uh, would do so at their peril, really. Um, but, but nonetheless, she sort of quietly, uh, you know, got on with building up Taiwanese autonomy, um, if you like. Now, Lai ching tse her current vice president, he actually has uh, a history of making slightly more openly pro-independent statements than his predecessor. You know, in his past, he once described himself as a, uh, a practical worker for independence, and that is why he is considered um, so dangerous, if you like, uh, by China. Worth saying, his running mate, uh, the woman who will be his vice president uh, prior to this, she was actually the Taiwan's envoy to America, so she has extremely close links with the Americans and, and him choosing her as his running mate was seen as a, a pretty intentional uh, and indicative thing and a, a symmetry, a, a symbolism, if you like, absolutely not lost on Beijing. So, yes, 100 percent, we, we will see him uh, continuing that relationship with America. And, of course, remember, it is the issue of Taiwan that is really one of the most sticky, uh, difficult things uh, that exists between China and America in that increasingly complex uh, and, and sometimes, I guess, extremely dangerous um, diplomatic relationship between, between China and America and how all-important that is. Hello, man. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we brought that to you just as it happened there, the results of that very significant election in Taiwan, which will see a third presidential term for the incumbent party, the DPP, uh, led by a new president who has hitherto served as the vice president. Uh, that is uh, William Lai Changde.